Hi everyone, welcome to Mindful Crafts and More. I'm Katrina. If this is your first time checking out my channel, welcome. Take a look at this video or any of my other videos. And if you find yourself inspired, join my channel. For those of you guys who are returning, welcome back. I really appreciate you just hanging out with me for a bit. So guys, in this video, I am doing a tag video. And I was fortunate enough to be tagged by my dear yarning friend, Priscilla at Distinctive Crochet. First of all, I just want to say thank you so much, Priscilla. I really appreciate you just considering me to participate in this endeavor. And um, yeah, I feel very honored uh, to be able to do so. All right. So this particular tag has to do with hooks. So let's go ahead and get started and answer some questions. All right, so I do have a series of questions here that are listed, so I might look down just a little bit with you guys. So please just bear with me, okay? All right, so the first one is, what is your favorite brand of hook? So my favorite brand of hook would have to be the boy hooks. Um, I say that because that's what I have the most of. And over the years, I have tried other hooks and just was not happy with the results of the work that I did with them. So I have tried Susan Bates. Um, I have tried Clover over the years, um, but I really do gravitate more towards the boy hooks. Now, you guys know I like trivia. And so I have just a little bit of trivia for you guys. Did you guys know that the Boy Needle Company was the first company in the U.S. to begin producing crochet hook sets. Yes, that is true. In 1917, the Boy Needle Company began producing these sets. And believe it or not, their hooks cost five cents. So just a nickel. Imagine that. Yeah. All right. Question number two, what is your favorite hook size? Okay, so the favorite hook size for me depends on uh, what kind of project I am working on. I do a lot of thread work, but I also do a lot of work with, you know, just worsted weight yarns and, you know, other yarns. I have been known to do bulky yarns as well, but I will say a lot of the projects that I do with crochet uh, tend to be um, either the threads or maybe category three or category four yarns. Those are the ones that I tend to work with the most. So for the threads, generally um, I will use a lot of size 10 crochet cotton. Um, and for that, I would use a size seven steel hook. Um, that's my favorite go-to. Um, I have also worked with size five and size three thread before. Um, and of course, I'll use a different hook size for those. But if I'm working with um, size 10 crochet cotton, then my go-to hook is about a steel seven, okay? Now, if I'm working with worsted weight yarn, then um, usually I will use an H hook. I really do like um, the feel of the H hook and the way the stitches work up if I'm doing worst of weight um, projects um, for that. Um, yeah, but again, I use a lot of different ones. So it's really going to depend on um, the weight category of the yarn as to which ones I choose. Okay. Question number three, do you prefer a tapered or an inline hook? Okay, so for me, let's talk about anatomy first, and then I can give an answer as to which one I prefer. So let's put a picture up of a hook. All right, so here's a picture of um, crochet hook. And if you look at the basic anatomy, I'm not gonna go in detail because actually crochet hooks can be pretty intricate, but let's just look at some basic you know, parts of the hook. You have your head portion, which can be either pointed or rounded. And then you have your throat or neck portion, which can be either 
in line or it can be tapered. Okay, so if it's in line, then from the head of the hook through the neck or throat portion of the hook leading to the shaft or shank portion of the hook, all of that is going to be the same thickness going all the way down, okay, if it's in line. Now, if it is tapered, then it's going to become more narrow from the head portion throughout the throat or neck portion. It's going to become a little bit more tapered, and then it's going to expand back out. Um, and that expansion leads to where your um, shaft or shank portion is to help you determine the size of your stitches, okay? So if you're using an inline, uh, then I think for the most part, it should be easier for you to um, make your stitches even. Um, however, I have difficulty when I am using an inline hook. So I learned how to use the tapered hooks and that's what I got accustomed to. So I am able to get very even stitches with a tapered hook, despite the fact that it could potentially be more challenging in theory if you're looking at the anatomy of the hook. Now, just for completeness sake, we'll go on with the rest of the anatomy of the hook. And we'll go down to the um, thumb rest portion or grip portion. So on many um, hooks, you will see this flattened out portion, which makes it easy for you to hold on to the hook because it's um, flat. And um, this is absent on some hooks. So some of your ergonomic hooks may or may not have this. Uh, some of the wooden hooks may or may not have this. Even some of the steel hooks um, may or may not have this thumb rest portion. Um, and then going back further from that would be um, your handle portion. And the handle portion can be made out of the same material as the rest of the hook, um, or it can have the ergonomic uh, grip that is softer for you to handle, um, or it can even be made out of wood. I've seen some hooks that, are ha that have a wood handle um, to them. So uh, yeah, so that's the basic anatomy of the hook. And so I hope that information is helpful for you guys. I do prefer um, the tapered um, hooks. Those are the ones that I tend to gravitate towards. Although I do have uh, some of all of the kinds that I listed and just described. I have all of them and I will use them from time to time just to make sure that I have a good understanding and handle of them. All right. Okay, so next, how do you grip your hook, pencil or knife? Okay, so I use a knife hold when I grab my hook as I am doing my work. And um, yeah, I've always done that. So I'm used to it and it doesn't bother me at all. I have tried to do the pencil hold and for me, it is just not comfortable. Uh, and I see other people and they seem to be able to crochet very, very quickly with the uh, pencil holds, but I, I cannot. And so I prefer to use the knife hold. Uh, now, interestingly enough, I began crocheting when I was about eight or nine years old. And we had craft classes that were offered at my church. And um, my grandmother just happened to tell the teacher after we had gotten started that I was left-handed. And my teacher was instructing me as a right-handed crocheter. And so for a while I was doing okay with using my right hand to crochet. Um, but after having a discussion with my grandmother, then I was taught to, crochet with my left hand. So now I crochet left-handed and it's just fine. I'm still awkward now with my right hand. I can do it, but it's a little bit more awkward for me. Um, but because I teach other people how to crochet, if they are right-handed and um, trying to 
teach them is troublesome to them, then I will show them right-handed version. Um, either way, whether I'm using right or left hand, however, I do notice that I crochet with a knife grip. So, okay. Um, the next question, number five, does the style of hook dictate how you crochet? No, it does not. Um, I've used an ergonomic hook before. I have used a wooden hook before. I've used steel hooks. I use aluminum hooks. Um, and it really doesn't matter. Even plastic hooks, I still crochet the same way. All right. Um, number six, do you prefer ergonomic hooks or regular hooks? That's a good question. Um, I prefer regular hooks. I'm accustomed to using them. They really don't bother me too much. What I will say though, is sometimes I will do very long range projects and I wanna get a lot accomplished with them. And so to cut down on the fatigue and the cramping or whatnot with my crochet, um, instead of using an ergonomic hook, what I will do is um, I will use a set of stress uh, items that I have made. So I have made some stress balls and some stress, what I call items, because they're all in different shapes. And I've made them in different um, densities. So some are more firm and some are more soft. And I will just take myself through a series of paces where I will use the softer ones and then some that are a little bit more firm and a little bit more firm to help my hands to exercise. It's kind of the same way you would use exercise equipment. I do the same thing with um, these um, items that I have made. And it really does make a difference to help my hands to get good blood flow and to make sure that I'm not getting any cramping or stiffness um, in my hands. And so that really does help me out a lot. And so I've found that with doing that, I don't necessarily have to use the ergonomic hooks at all uh, with my crafting. But um, that being said, I do have ergonomic hooks and I am going to keep them. And the reason is because I do notice as we continue to get older, things do change. And I would like to continue to craft as often and as long as I can. And so um, they came with sets that I have purchased. And so I'm going to keep them because there may become a time that I have to use them for more comfort. And so I don't wanna be left without being able to craft, okay? All right, so next, what are your thoughts on light up hooks? All right, so my thoughts on uh, light up hooks are this. I like them, I think that they're a novelty and they're just kind of awesome. Um, I do prefer to do my crafting in a well-lit area. And so that being said, I probably wouldn't have a need for the light-up hooks. So I don't know how much I would use them. Now, I'm going to tell my age by giving this information, but I have over the years had subscriptions to so many different craft magazines from Work Basket to Magic Crochet, to uh, Crochet World, to Knitting World, uh, Crochet Today, just so many different ones. Um, and with that, I think I remember when they first came out with these lighted hooks and I thought, oh my gosh, those are awesome. Um, but even though I would take a look at them and read up on them and just kind of say, ooh and ah, I never purchase them. I never order them uh, simply because I really do like to have a well-lit area. So I don't know that I would find myself uh, knitting in a dark area where I couldn't see well. Um, so 
as a result, I haven't purchased them and I haven't tried them, but I think they're kind of neat. Okay, next question. Have you ever used a hook with interchangeable heads? Um, and if so, what are your thoughts? Um, no, I have not. Um, what I have used though, are a few other kind of novelty um, hooks. And that is, I have used a set of hooks which have the hook on both ends. And um, yeah, so I went to an estate sale and I got some hooks from this sale. And in the items, they had these hooks that had different um, sized um, hooks on either side. And I thought that was kind of neat and interesting. So I tried them out. Now, the ones that I had were kind of long. And so they were similar to the Tunisian hooks. Um, and so depending on where you are doing your crafting, you have to have a lot of elbow room and space to do them if you were using these hooks. So I don't use them very often, but I have tried them. Um, they do take up less space, of course, because then you don't have to have a big case or a bag or a pouch or things like that to carry all your hooks. Um, but um, yeah, so I do have those. The other thing I have that's kind of a novelty that's a little different are a set of nook um, needles. Okay, so what is a nook? A nook are something like these. Okay, so these are a cross between a knitting needle and a crochet hook. So if you look closely on one end, there is a crochet hook. And then on the other end, there is a point like a knit, knitting needle. And then if you look, there is a hole on them, if you can see that hole. Okay, so the hole is so that you can take any one of these cords and you can pull the cord through the stitches so that you can then use the nook to work on your stitches for the next row. So for crocheters, that might not make a lot of sense, but if you do any work with knitting, it does. One of the differences between knitting and crocheting is when we do our crochet work, our stitches generally are completed before we move on to the next stitch. Um, with knitting, however, your uh, stitches remain live until you're ready to use them. They're not completed. Um, and so as a result, your loops will stay on your knitting needle or they will stay on a stitch holder or you will take some kind of a cord or a piece of yarn or something like that to take your unworked stitches or stitches you're not using to hold them in place until you're ready to use them. And so for us crocheters, um, they came up with um, this invention to try to help us because our stitches um, would fall off of this point because we're used to having a hook. We're not used to having just something smooth and straight and pointed. So this was, I guess, an attempt to solve that and to help people who are accustomed to crochet to embrace and learn how to knit. Um, I don't use these that often, but I do have a set and I have used them. Um, I actually know how to knit using needles. So again, this is more of a novelty for me and um, something for uh, the people that I try to teach crafting to, if they're having challenges, then I'll bring it out as an introduction until they're more comfortable um, with it, okay? Now, the other thing that I have used, which I think in the crochet world could be considered a novelty or just a different style are Tunisian. So I have a set of Tunisian hooks here, and these are the old fashioned traditional style of Tunisian hooks. Now for these, you are limited by the size of the hook. And if you notice here, we just got through talking a little bit about anatomy, right? So for these, um, in all honesty, there is no grip, right? On these, there's no grip at all, no thumb gri uh, grip. Um, and 
there is no real handle because you go straight from the head to the throat or neck area, right? To the shaft or shank area. And it just continues for the whole entire length of the hook. All right. Um, and these are boy, of course. Um, as I told you, I have a lot more boy um, hooks and whatnot than any other brand. Um, and um, yeah, so there you go. Now, um, besides those, um, those are the only ones that I um, have used, but I have not used the interchangeable ones. Um, I do find them to be very interesting, um, but haven't used them. All right, guys. Okay, number nine. Do you like projects that require small stainless steel hooks or larger hooks? Um, yes, I do. I really do like doing thread work. Um, I have worked with size 10 crochet thread. I have worked with size um, five crochet thread and size three crochet thread. All of them, I love working with them. They all will utilize the steel hooks. Um, I don't uh, find them to be too much of a challenge um, at all to work with. And yes, I love uh, working with them. Um, I use the regular ones whenever I work with them. So I don't use the ergonomics, even if I'm using a steel hook, I still will use the regular um, steel hooks. So those are the really small ones. Um, and then as far as the larger hooks, um, yes, I use those also. So these right here are some examples of larger hooks. Um, these are Q hooks. And uh, you see that there are differences in the way these are made. So this one has a thumb rest. Um, this one does not, you know, although the thumb rest is so close, but um, yeah, so these are, you know, different styles of your Q hooks. Um, and I've used those to make rugs. So um, you can either use the rug yarn, which is more of a specialty yarn, or you can just use multiple plies of your worsted weight yarn. So for my Q hook, uh, when I make my rugs, I will take maybe about six different strands of my worsted weight yarn and use that as one to make my uh, items with my Q hooks. So I will work with any size hook or any size uh, yarn or thread. I just really like doing crafting guys. All right, so number 10, if you were only allowed to use two hooks for the rest of your life, what size and brand would they be? Okay, so for me, um, I would say I really enjoy working with the threads. And so um, I would have to have a steel hook size seven. And I also like doing the worsted weight projects. And so I would have to have my H hook. I would just have to have it. Now, I have a specific H hook that I like. And this is the interesting thing. So this is the specific hook that I like. And the interesting thing about it is it says H8 on there, but you know what guys, I have absolutely no idea what brand it is. There is no brand name on this hook. So it's a no name hook. It is, um, it does have a tapered throat. It has a rounded head. Um, it does have a very smooth, thumb grip or thumb rest area. Um, and then the handle of it is made of the same material as the, um, as the hook. Um, and of course it is tapered here. So this is my favorite hook. It is very smooth the way it's polished and everything. The yarn just glides with it. Um, I really try to keep track of it because I have absolutely no idea what company made it or what have you. Um, but yeah, this is my favorite. So I would definitely want to keep this specific hook as long as I can. And I hope I never lose it. Um, but um, in all honesty, um, I really just like um, doing crafting. So I hope I never have to choose. Um, and I'm sure many of you guys will feel the same. I hope I never have to choose just one or two. But 
if I did, those two would be the ones that I would choose. All right now, so that's all I have for today. I hope that the information was helpful to you. I would like to do a tag and tag a few of my yearning friends in the crafting community and see what their thoughts are on this particular set of questions. So tag your it guys. I'm gonna tag Tina Bailey. And Tina is a very lovely person. If you haven't already met Tina, please go over to her channel and show her some love. She is just getting started with her channel and she does some beautiful crafts. I have seen some of her work and it is beautiful. She is a very big supporter in the crafting community. And I think you guys would just love her. So head on over to Tina Bailey. I'll put her information in the description box below. Cynthia's crochet and more. Cynthia also does some very beautiful work. Please check out her channel. I think you guys will love it. Um, she uh, is just a really, really talented, uh, talented crafter. So please check her out. You've been tagged, Cynthia. Next, Sophronia of Sophronia Crafts. I would like to tag her as well. Sophronia does a lot of comparison and reviews. She puts yarns through their paces and really gives you a good understanding of the yarns that you can uh, watch what she does and then determine if it's something that you wanna also try and purchase. And so I really do love her channel. So please send Sophronia some love and let her know that I sent you guys over there. Um, next, Kim at Affordably Crafty. Um, Kim is a wonderful crafter and she does a lot of reviews on how to do your crafting in an affordable way. And so if you guys haven't checked her channel out yet, please, please, please do so. I love her channel. And I love the tips that she gives us on uh, doing our um, crafts in a very economic way. So those are the people that I'm going to tag. And for any of you guys, if I haven't mentioned your name, you are not left out. Please do a video. Consider yourself tagged also. That's all I have for today. What I'm gonna do is, as usual, recommend to you guys to please take care of yourself. Do everything you can to be your best health possible. Make sure you're getting plenty of sleep. It's really important. Drink plenty of water. Keep yourself hydrated, guys. Make sure you're eating well. Um, make sure you're getting some exercise when you can. It's really important also. And don't forget, each and every day to be mindful and to be crafty. I look forward to seeing you guys real, real soon. Take care now. Bye-bye.